Hello. I'm reviewing a movie. Called Mission Impossible. Dead Reckoning Pop. Or is it. You know, I was thinking of doing the Dead Reckoning Pop one, but I think I just want to talk about the first one instead. So, I'm reviewing the first Mission Impossible movie with Tom Cruise, I give. This movie, a 7 out of 10. It is a mediocre piece of bullshit of a movie. That feels like a confused vision. These chairs again. Okay. I was reviewing something, but I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know I was in the way. Okay. 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 Is okay. I still record now. Yes. Okay. So, this is my thoughts on the Mission Impossible movie. I give this a seven out of ten for average score. It's not one of my favorite flicks. And that's a big problem for me. Because. I just think it could have been a better movie. And. I thought it was kind of stupid that the whole movie kind of lost its momentum. Once they killed off the first team and replaced it with this other Mission Impossible 2.1 new team that gets recruited by Ethan Hunt. I felt like for some reason once the movie had had it killed off the old team of that that the movie started out with. Before we uh, found out that that's not the team we're following in the movie, it's the uh, second team that's the main team that we follow in this movie of Mission Impossible. For me, I just don't know why, but I think the old the old team, I. I don't know why, but I felt like the old team needed more screen time for me to actually give a damn rat's ass about them before they just kill them off. Because to me, it feels like they just kill them off just to get a shock out of the audience, not because they actually uh, knew what to do with these characters or that they are more, that, that they are really important characters in the movie. Which I'm questioning, uh, okay, uh, how many useless side characters in the, in the movies, in in this movie of Mission Impossible, is, is there going to be, that get killed off in the sh for shock value? I don't know. I wasn't sure be, while watching, the first time watching the movie. Luckily, it's just that, I, like, I guess the only kill off characters for shock value only the uh f only two for the first mission was the team of that works for uh the leader Jim who's also the leader in the Mission Impossible show and he's also the one that's the main bad guy of that's the that's the fat vile man Behind the curtains, bad guy. We find out in the final twist in the reveal of this Mission Impossible uh, reimagining version of Movie Gym versus very different from uh, uh, that's a very different ter take to go with, with Jim than uh, Jim Phillips, the character, than well, than what they did with the show. I mean.
based off of I haven't seen a whole lot of the sh I haven't seen a, the, all of the episodes of the show, but based off I've seen the show, it seems like Jim was the main mascot of the franchise, of the Mission Impossible franchise, for the show. So it's a little strange how. Uh, this movie changes the main mascot of the Mission Impossible fr uh, franchise show. And they made him into a villain. Might have actually, I guess, might have, uh, I, I hear, like, kind of, uh, didn't sync well with the OG Mission Impossible fans that were watching the show. And I don't understand why. I mean, that was one of the. F I mean, I've watched some of the show, but I, I haven't watched. I'm not the Die Hard fan yet. Uh, but I haven't seen all of those episodes yet. But I'll get around to it and then review it, the entire series in one video one time, uh, uh, sometime in the f future for my videos that I'll make. And, um, I guess I give this a 7 out of 10. It feels very, uh, like, uh, kind of rush Man of Steel at times. It feels like kind of like Man of Steel movie, like rushed at times. When it gets, when it gets closer and closer to the end. Like, It might be just me, but I feel like this movie, as it gets closer to the end, it wants to speed things up as much as possible to just get over, to get the movie f finished. It feels like one of those movies. Like, the filmmakers just want to finish the movie, wrapping up the movie up, because they know that they don't really have anything interesting else to show. Other than Tom Cruise running and and finding out who killed the, it's it's really um look this Mission Possibly is not uh doesn't have a lot of action, really a uh, high core action like the uh like the sequels did. That pump that that that's done by Tom Cruise. In fact, the action is pretty, uh, lame. How we say this? Sucks. Because whenever there is action, it's usually the such a CGI action shot. And Tom Cruise reacting to a CGI, uh, so-and-so there. Yeah, so the action is not the best in the movie. In this movie, it's not the the action is not one of the highlights of the movie like it was with the sequels, Mission Impossible Two, and beyond that, Mission Impossible Two. From starting with Mission Impossible Two to all of them after Mission Impossible Two. Yeah, the first Mission Impossible movie is probably the worst Mission Impossible movie because it's something that uh, is something that has little to offer. Little, it's the one in the franchise that has the little, the least to offer. Uh, in the franchise, for I, for I think newcomers that just want to see a Tom Cruise action flick, the they should see the. Uh, sequels to Mission Impossible, any of the sequels, except for, uh, any of the, so any of the Mission Impossible movies, except for the first one. If they want to see a Tom Cruise action flick, see any of the Mission Impossible movies, except for the first one. Because you're not going to get that with the first one. So, and... If you're an OG fan, like a diehard fan, that's probably seen every episode, that's probably seen more episodes like than me, like my dad. Um, he's, he's probably seen more episodes than me, I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing. 
because he introduced me to the show first. That's he introduced me to the show first, and that's how I uh, that's how I discovered because my dad introduced me to the sh show. And I watched the sh he introduced. Let me watch the show first. But uh, yeah, um. At young age, I watched the show first before watching the first Mission Impossible movie. And, um, because my dad showed me the show first. So, I consider myself a, a partly old, uh, old I, I consider myself a, a, a fan-ish of the show. This A small fan, because I haven't seen a whole lot of the epi episode, of a, a good amount of episodes, enough to see. It's a diehard fan, okay? Yet, so. So, I haven't seen the whole, all the episodes, okay? Uh, of Mission Impossible, the original show. Right here on television back in the day. That this movie uh, is a complete reimagining and remake of. Uh, the show. And, um... It's a different interpretation than the what... Than, than what's in the show, I guess. So, it's not really something that's for the OG Mission Possible fans. Uh, the ones of uh, fans of the show. To my understanding of... I, uh, to my understanding, so I guess my question is, I wonder what the Mission first Mission Impossible movie, who was it made for? Because it wasn't made for, uh, made for people who want to see a dumb puck one flick, because that's not what this movie is trying to be, it's trying to be smart. And it's, it comes across as, yeah, it just comes across as like, uh, Not entertaining enough, not spontaneous enough, not creative enough. But the movies feels like a kind of old been there, done that movie. It feels like one of those movies you've seen before. Personally, I think Blade Trinity was a better movie than. Fuck it, this movie that I'm talking about. I like Blade for the third Blade movie more than a, a little more than a, this average piece of voice of a movie that I give a seven out of ten. Called, fuck! I forget what we're reviewing. Uh, uh, and uh, fuck! I forgot what I was reviewing. Okay, but I remember I gave it a seven out of ten of my movie I reviewed. Called Mission Impossible from 1996, the first Mission Impossible movie starring Tom Cruise. As Ethan Hunt. And I thought this was a kind of retarded movie. One of the most dumbest piece of shit's movies I've seen. And the most unimaginative ones. One of the most unimaginative piece of shit of a movie I've seen. Unimaginative, stupid, boring crap. Written. Monkey see, monkey do story telling it is. The first Mission Impossible comes across as a uh, dumb, 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 boring, 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 and unimaginative as balls with snails ball last pacing. That's slow. That feels like you're on Nyquil, like you're feeling the effects of Nyquil or some kind of heavy duty sleeping drug. Or heavy duty painkiller. That's addictive. Or uh, opioid one. 
like the best kind of painkiller. It feels like this movie's numbing your brain up with Novocaine. That's how retarded the story is of a fucking retarded movie called Mission Impossible from 1996. Starring Tom Cruise in his fucking worst movie I've seen him in to this day. Next to The Mummy from 2017. Although I think the mummy was kind of laughably bad, this is just stupid bad. And yawn bad. This is Snowfest. Is what I call this movie. It can be at times. Well, it does have like its, its perks, but I just don't really like the whole movie as it comes together. You know. That's why I give this piece of horse shit of a movie a mediocre score. A 7 out of 10. I do not recommend this fucking movie. But I can't stop anyone, so fuck it. See it at your own risk, you idiots. Thank you for watching my content. Subscribe to my content by hitting the bell first. Hit the subscribe button second. And that's how you get subscribed. Hit the thumbs up. That's the like button. And on this video, and hit the like button on my other videos, my older ones I posted onto my channel. Okay, goodbye. That's my review on Mission Impossible.